Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of the chief It's justice. a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, very, very <laughs> terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocate. Five panelists and five freshly baked topics. No holds barred. Speaking of freshly baked, Bolaho is advocating that we crank up the oven when it comes to our national budget. Is it a case of Oliver Twist? Chuka is equally dissatisfied with the state of things. This time, he's asking us to get an education. Falashade, our fresh advocate and doctor in the house, wants to bring us into the 21st century as concerns mental health. Ekene makes an assertion that Nigerians are one of the wonders of the world. I wonder how many Nigerians would agree with her. Our population explosion is fast becoming a wonder. However, I'll be taking this on after the break. If it isn't nipped in the bud, the slender sapling eventually becomes a towering tree. Nigeria's population explosion, that is my topic this week. Last week, President Muhammadu Buhari presented the 2019 economic budget to the National Assembly. Having looked at the various allocations, it is hard to see how this budget will make any real difference in the lives of the rapidly growing Nigerian population, especially with no noticeable increase in resources. It is therefore time to look closely at our population explosion if we are to significantly improve our living standards and economic growth and development. According to researchcyber.com, Nigeria is the seventh most populated country in the world, with an annual population growth of about 31 million, with China and India ahead. An unchecked increase in human population invariably leads to an unhealthy struggle for survival, as there are many mouths to provide food, clothing, housing, healthcare, and education for, with not enough resources. It is no surprise that malnutrition, overcrowding, crime, and low life expectancy are all on the increase. Some of the causes of rapid population growth in Nigeria include the following, poor family planning, illiteracy, and ignorance, poverty, culture, religion, migration, urbanization, polygamy, and early marriage. There is therefore an urgent need for population control measures to a level that positively impacts our national development. Also desperately needed is mass education and awareness on population issues on a regular basis to let the public understand the effects of large families above family resources. There should be a significant increase in awareness on efficient and effective family planning methods, making them accessible, affordable, and feasible in order to encourage its use. And finally, there is need to encourage monogamy as against polygamy and discourage early marriage. Interesting. I was trying to work out how monogamy might lead to less Children, children yeah. <laughs> because it doesn't, it's not a direct thing. No, I was thinking, can uh, you see you, the connection but, though? Um, um, because I was just thinking to myself, if one, one woman went around different men, oh. then it will end up <laughs> But that's not, like, that's not the norm. Yeah, know, um, yeah well, d d uh, well, some have children. Baby and, mama. Uh, yeah, but you know, I was just wondering that, is it that, what will happen is that many women will supposedly go unmarried, is what you're saying. 
it's, would what? rather leave some women on the shelf. Oh, you think that's no, why no, you no, have no, polygamy? No, 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 no. I'm just saying that that's, uh, those are the kind of things that will happen, of course. You know, because well, if, that, we, if, we have, because angle. if we have polygamy, <laughs> it means that there's, there's women that want to be second, third, or fourth wives, not necessarily because they feel any low esteem or anything. It's just, I don't know, whatever. But what I'm saying is it means that we will have uh, uh, women on the shelf. Now, is that another problem, or is it okay? Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, that wasn't the angle I was going to come at you from. Not Socially, is it going to be another problem that we're going to deal with? The, the, well, the, there is a number side to that, yes. which is to say, what is the population of eligible men vis-a-vis -vis the eligible women? If we don't even have that number, mm. so we cannot begin to take a call on, on what you're suggesting. Okay. You know. um, but my, my, my worry is when you have an economy growing at 2% or 1.9% and a population growing at 2.6, 2.7%, we will continue to throw more people in the pool of poverty exactly. because the population mm -hmm. is growing faster mm -hmm. than the resources that are required to support them. Mm -hmm. So that, that is very fundamental to, mm -hmm. to, to the uh, uh, issue at, on, on the table. Mm -hmm. I felt that really we need to be looking at it as a public health concern. Right. And it relates very much to what we're going to talk about later in terms of my concern around mental health. Mm. The issue is, is that there is an increased risk of mortality when a woman has more than four children. Oh. And I went to check the stats, and actually in this country, the average um, birth rate for women here is 5.5. Mm. So already, you find out that there's increased mortality. Second thing I checked out is, we're, we actually have a national strategy on family planning and birth control, but I don't believe that it's um, been well articulated. Exactly. Apparently, there was a commitment in 2012 where there was supposed to be a, a, a program that ended in 2020 with the aim that by 2018, 38% I believe of our pop, female population should be using contraception. Now, I have to say that I've not heard of that and I'm a medic. Um, and I, I, I wonder, therefore, how, many, how, how this is being articulated, how this is being rolled out on a state level, mm -hmm. on an indiv individual level. Um, also, the funding that goes with it. I was speaking to a pharmacist yesterday who said, actually, she actually educated me that family planning, contraception is actually quite cheap. Mm. But the challenge becomes about our, our, our perception of that. She said she spoke to a woman who told her that, you know, you have to get all the children out. For as long as she sleeps <laughs> with her husband and she conceives, she believes that it's the right thing to have those children. So I think there needs to be, you know, more work on rolling out or allowing everybody to know about this national strategy mm -hmm. and psychoeducation. Yeah. Okay, no, 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 I mean, I, I think I'll have a slightly different position to, to mm -hmm. what I've heard so far. Mm -hmm. And clearly it's, it's responsible to not just have children, but have a plan for your children. Mm -hmm. um, but I've always believed, and I'll always believe, unless I'm given other, I don't think I'm likely to be convinced otherwise, that children are a blessing. And the more you have, have as many as you like. And I, I'm, I'm an advocate of have as many as you like, simply because I just see that Human beings will never be the, the problem. It's how you um, equip those human beings to be an asset. Because at the end of the day, w when we come to maybe other advocacies, we'll see that some of the ways you get revenue is by taxing the population. So if you have a, a large uh, population and you empower them to be productive, they become your resource. They become an asset to you. Yes. And most people that have the population we have at an average of a youthful population will be excited because they'll think, wow, mm -hmm. we have a human resource that people are looking for and begging for. The problem is we haven't invested in them. So I appreciate that where we are currently, it looks like the population is working against us rather, rather than, than working for us. For us so yes. yes, I think we should, in terms of public health and even you know, social health, if you like, yeah. people should be uh, made to appreciate that human resource and having a child is a, is a, is a blessing. And somehow, grow your, grow your, when you're having a child, you look for ways to invest in that child from the get-go, make sacrifices. When I see people sending their children out to beg on the streets, I'm saying, what parents, even if you were poor, will send your child out to beg and then you stay at home. Mm. Somehow the police should follow those children to the house and make those parents accountable for the children they're having. So I just feel you, you don't even have to have more than two children to show neglect for mm -hmm. the one or two mm -hmm. children. So I want to look at more of the sense of responsibility towards the children rather than, because I think at the end of the day, it's good to say, look, inform people, let them make an informed choice. But I don't really, I'm not a, an advocate for take away that choice or impose mm -hmm. a restriction on their ability to have right. as many children mm -hmm. as they want. Quite, well, I, I mean, I, I think from my advocacy, I wasn't trying to no, take away from any. That way. It was really mm -hmm. just putting in measures. You know, I think more about educating people so that they can make the right choices. Um, we had a, a cook who 
had 11 children and he's not able to send, there's only one child that's going to school out of the 11 children. Wow. And that child, he's not even the one that's paying for that child to, to go to school. Mm -hmm. And then he has all these boys that do nothing but turn to crime and just cause, because they're not working. Mm -hmm. So, and, and when, you know, my aunt, who's a nurse, spoke to this cook and said, you know, have you considered family planning and, and things like that? He was like, what? what? What is that? You know, it's, it's, so that mindset is not even there for many families. And they're just producing all these children. And, and when you ask them, who's going to take care of these? They say, God. God yeah. meaning the rest of the us, rest of obviously, us. Yeah. because yeah. that's how it's going to happen. Yeah. No problem at all. But the point is, make informed choices. Mm -hmm. Don't bring children into the world so they can become beggars for you. You know, don't, don't bring them into the world so you can use them as a way to increase your revenue. Sacrifice, like you said, for mm -hmm. your children. Yeah. I really don't care how many pe children people have. Just... Don't, take care don't, of them. Yeah, take have care of them plan. and then don't make them a burden on society. Don't right. make them criminals because... Effectively, that's what they end up being when they're not working. Ha, ha, or however, school. because of the situation we find ourselves in today, that the country isn't working, mm. much as I would love to agree with um, Ekene, mm. I have to say that for now, we, we have must to put in it. measures. Mm. You know, there's such a thing as you put in measures. This man has just closed the borders. I don't think he's going to close them forever. But he thinks he's doing a good thing, and he's closing it for a reason. So mm. we have to do something now, and we can release it later, and you can have the seven you want. Mm. You know? All right. Well, advocacy is also about foresight and prevention. Interestingly, Bolahan looks at another angle of the population and provision challenge. He says it's time to bake a bigger cake. Interesting. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is That's wrong. Easy. You yeah. can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really. disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy is a terrible, like a terrible, <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You are watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Time to bake a bigger cake. There is an African saying that sharing two chicken drumsticks amongst three elders is a difficult assignment. This is what has become of a country like ours and its budgeting. By my estimate, Nigeria with 200 million people and huge infrastructure deficit needs at least an annual budget size of about 150 trillion mm. to fire its turbines on all cylinders. It should not be surprising that sharing 10 trillion has become such a Herculean task. Let me drive my point home by comparing the two largest economies in Africa. Number one is Nigeria, followed closely by South Africa. As of June 2019, when I did the numbers, South Africa, a country of less than 60 million people, proposed a budget of 44 trillion naira equivalent for its 2020-21 year. Nigeria, with 200 million people, struggles with 10 trillion naira. Do not say I told you. The education budget for South Africa's central government for 2020-21 is about 10.7 trillion equivalent. And that is more than the size of the entire cake that the federal government of Nigeria is bringing to the table. Let's do a little extrapolation. Simply sake as it may appear, it should get us thinking. If the central government of a country of 60 million people post a budget of 44 trillion naira, how much should the central government of a 200 million people country post? The answer is 147 trillion, ceteris paribus. However, when we consider the fact that South Africa is light years ahead in infrastructure, then even our 147 trillion begins to look inadequate. We have a revenue problem, and this disease is breeding symptoms such as 
unsustainable debt, poor infrastructure, pervasive poverty, and other ailments. I want to advocate that while we committedly manage the symptoms, we must not lose focus on the disease. For the disease, revenue is the root of the symptoms. Come along with me. Let's make some noise to let the government know that we must bake a bigger cake, a much bigger cake. We must bake a bigger cake. The only problem is where are we going to get the ingredients from, you know? <laughs> That's the thing we have to look at. From what, we're, from what I understand, they're trying to get the ingredients from us, <laughs> you know, and we don't even have much of a cake. <laughs> you know, yeah. We don't even have the stuff. So they're taxing us to high heaven. And I don't know whether, you know, everything, the, the bigger cake really, according to your advocacy, will probably only come from more borrowing, which is, not, not you don't think so? Not necessarily. Do you know, I read yesterday that um, we had reached, what was our, our debt has reached, 20, is it 23 trillion? Is it yeah, it should be in that, something? It should be in that neighborhood. And, and, and basically, in, 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 a lot of it dollars. has happened in the last three years. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. So all this borrowing that we're doing, and, and we're, this is how we're getting the bigger cake quite all right. Yeah, another thing I noticed yesterday I read about was that, um, I don't know how many of us have applied for our national identity cards, right? Okay. And uh -huh. well, until to today, we have not received the cards, even though we yeah. might have gotten the slip. Yeah. And then I read yesterday that the reason why we haven't gotten the card is because we don't have the money. There's no money. To give us to get the oh, card. Really? Yes. <laughs> and now they're even charging for replacement cards and everything. If you ask me, from everything I have seen around, Nigeria is broke. I don't believe Nigeria is solvent right. in so any this, shape. This is where I'll come in because I, I think, you know, I'm glad she said the, mm. where are the ingredients. Okay, because, please come yeah, in. I, I mean, I'm, mm. I'm flowing with you in the sense mm. that clearly it's tax, taxation. Mm. I did hear you say something, you know, uh, recently, which that we're one of the least taxed countries, you know, when you compare with countries like the United States yeah. where, and even the UK, they yes. can tax you up to 50%. But, yes. yeah. Yeah. But, 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 but I don't even mind being taxed if I were seeing the dividends, yes. because there at least you're getting your light, you're getting your water, you're mm -hmm. getting your, so you know why you're paying your tax. Right. But not when I'll pay tax, I have to police you as well, I have to make you accountable to me, and you're, if sometimes you act as if I have no right talking to you at all. Sometimes. At least over there, the language is, I pay my taxes, so I'm mm -hmm. entitled to hold you accountable. Here, you pay but they want to now dictate to you and behave as if you can't talk to them like a dictatorship. I'm sorry, they're not ready because, and then you're still talking about, you know, outrageous sums when it comes to the legislature's mm. income and their living allowances. They're not inspiring us. So I want, I'm happy, I also heard you talking about how they're dealing with travel allowances, ESTA codes. Correct. Let's see, it's, it's a proclamation at the moment. Mm. Let them begin to pull back. I think they need to set themselves to lead by example, finally. Correct. Pull back on your expenditure, show us that you're living a much leaner lifestyle. Before you even talk of increasing taxes, because people will not, unless they're going to come and pull it from my bank account by force, people are <laughs> more likely to rebel against that. Because that's the only way they can let you know that we don't trust you with the little you have. Because uh, let's well, I, even, I even, even would, GJ's I wish time. people would rebel against it, but I have a feeling people have been so browbeaten, uh, beaten, sorry, at this time, that they will just, we're accepting everything. Because the case we're, not, point we're not is good protesting about anything. Era where they apparently yeah. had more because income. Because they found him see. easier because he wasn't, he wasn't coming down on people like that. But now you, sit, you speak just speak a different language to what is being spoken right now, and you don't know where you're going to so end up. My so. own cake, bigger cake starts with you start yes. showing us cutbacks. You start uh, showing uh, us yeah. greater creativity with the way you manage our income, and then we're ready to talk about bigger cake coming from us. The, 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 <laughs> the, the truth is, um, bigger cake does not have to start from tax on the masses. Mm -hmm. um, it has to start from the top. Yes. If you take an economy like the United States, the top 1% close to 40% of the entire tax, 1%. Yeah. And then the, 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 this amount that this 1% pay is bigger than what 90% bottom pays. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about the dangotes and the... So the top earners mm -hmm. need to pay. First. Absolutely. Absolutely. They need to take a fair share of the burden. Mm -hmm. the, then the second part is we need to bring in more people into the tax net and improve collection. See, there are instances of even deductions from staff salary that are never remitted. Mm. In Lagos State, on the books in Lagos State, there are only 770,000 taxpayers. Can we get more people to feel participatory? But that is also a junction where there's some problems. Because 
The reason people don't feel good about paying taxes is that they've not yeah, seen what the little... Absolutely. 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 Yes. So, so, we, need so, so, we, so we need to build a trust. We need to build a trust. So why we're even saying, okay, we have come into the 2020 budget, which is a paltry amount. It's ridiculous. There's nothing we can bake with that, with that, with that budget. Mm. Okay, yeah. yeah. No, no, I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it, it was a few years ago that I wrote an article that Nigeria is broke, and that was during Good Luck Jonathan's whatever, and that he's just trying to play the artful dodger, and nothing is going to come of it. And so, whether you kick him out, bring in this new man, nothing is going to happen. I think we're in serious trouble. I think because we have nowhere to go, nowhere to hide, nowhere to run, and nowhere to hide. Well, I think it's a matter of leadership, isn't it? Yeah. As was rightly pointed out by Bolahan in. Um, westernized countries it's the top one percent that pay the most tax mm -hmm. but the reality is is that the ordinary people so to speak are willing to pay tax because you can see mm -hmm. what your money is being used for I, I i am based in the uk mm -hmm. you have electricity around the clock you have running water around the clock good you roads. have good roads infrastructure etc okay. sometimes i complain mm -hmm. that i pay so much tax but at the end of the day i can see the benefit mm -hmm. however has been rightly pointed out it's very difficult to mobilize the people to pay taxes when they can't see the benefits. Mm -hmm. um, I've just had a nightmare since I came into the country last week with the state of our roads and how a journey that should take 15 minutes is taking four hours. But like I say, human resource, if we can invest in it, like I like mm -hmm. what you, you, the comparisons you made, very enlightening, mm -hmm. that South Africa, 10 trillion, their education Imagine. budget yes. is the entire budget for the country. For but actually, when I read up, South Africa, is, their education budget is way above America and UK, so they're progressive, they're doing but they're doing an aggressive agenda. Yeah, they're yeah. investing in their people mm, now correct. and hopefully we'll see the dividends in the future mm. you know so what are we doing about our population that people are you know should be the envy of the world mm. how are we investing in them yeah, a population wonder. that should be an asset mm. for us has become a liability yeah. mm. other countries with the size of people that we have um, using it to turn the turbines yeah is a weight sitting on that well if you don't right. invest in education it's no point crying over spilt milk they say Chuka. It's not so much crying as calling out for change after the break. Welcome to The Advocates, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is That's wrong. Easy. You yeah. can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics and enjoys for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. There could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, terrible. Like a terrible, <laughs> terrible strategy. strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Okay, I'm an advocate of street talk. Time to stop beating about the bush. Education revamps culture. The last time we had stories this scandalous and shameful emanating from Nigeria's presidency was when President Yar Adwa was ill. He could not be brought out of the plane that flew him back into the country for fear he might give up or that we would see that he had in fact given up. So a cabal hijacked his job, kept out good luck Jonathan, the vice president, from taking over. We were being ruled by a dying man. His wife had fingers pointed at her as a major player in this dastardly plot. One would think we have grown a bit by now. Well, here we are. They say the president, Major General Buhari, was to take on a new wife, one of his cabinet ministers. They say his wife rushed back from a two-month-long trip abroad, ostensibly to protect her position. Then some close relatives of the general, who appear to have taken up residence at the official quarters of the president, arranged for her to be locked out of her home. One of them, Fatima, leaks a video of the first lady in angry mode and then proceeds to attack her in an interview with the BBC. In all this, Mr. President appears unaware. If Boris Johnson had not gotten into a fight with his girlfriend and still win the British Prime Ministership, I'd have said only in Nigeria. But give it to Northern Nigeria. This is not good for them. It is not good for the image of their traditional family arrangements and their religious dogmas.
it's really bad. What it shows is that we have voted wrong. It shows that we are given poor choices to select from. It shows that it is time to clean up. It is time to revolutionize our ways and our customs. It shows that there are inherent deficiencies in the way we are educated and prepared to run our nation. Though just about every Nigerian agrees that this is so, there are some who sell out for money and position, and others who feel helpless to the situation. I think the last is the more realistic problem we have to tackle. We need to educate people more, formally and informally, especially in the northern areas which lag behind here. Education is knowledge, is power. It is important for the overhaul of cultural systems and traditions. Chicken, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I feel I, I'm trying to sort of draw a connection between the first part of your advocate and right. the last part of your yeah. advocate because right. you told the story about the first lady mm. and I felt like I needed to even clarify some points about that story, mm. you know, if you permit Please me. Please do. Yes. Because um, she, she, yes, Aisha Buhari came back. Mm. Um, but we don't necessarily know if she came back to protect any position. No, I, even, just, uh, I, know, I know, I know what you're saying. I'm say. just saying, let me... Which you know. is the whole point. And then also, that video that we saw was actually an old video. It was, mm -hmm. I think, from two yeah, years ago. Yes, I know. Oh, yes, yeah. it's an old okay, video. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. so that people know that. So yeah. they don't see, think yeah. it's like a connection, yeah. connection, connection. connection. Yeah. Um, yes, it's crazy that people who are n not direct, like, nuclear members of the president's family are living in Asso Rock at our expense, obviously, because we are feeding them everything. Correct. And they have the audacity to take, you know, film the first lady losing her mind and then go to the BBC and talk about it. But that's another story. Now, what I want to understand is the connection between that story and I think the, I know the connection. The last bit. So if you can please let, explain should, should let me, let me, let me, Let me say or what you, I think you know, is the connection. Okay. In case I'm, yeah, because for me, there is a connection in the sense that I feel, I talked to someone recently who said the problem with Nigeria is that we're not real about our problems, therefore we're not real about the solutions. Right. So mm -hmm. we, and then recently I was listening to something about the baby factories, there's a kind of hypocrisy mm -hmm. we play, and I link it to religion, again, coming to the sex for grace, there's so many connections there. Right. So you find that, you know, you, you, you can't have a child but you don't want to go and adopt because you want to feel as if it's your it's child. Yours, so you yes. go and go through a baby factory because you want and to now pretend, baby. you know. So, so there's a lot of hypocrisy in the way we live our lives and our double standards. So he brought in the Boris Johnson say, look, he had a spat with his girlfriend. It was on the news, but it didn't stop people voting for him mm. because they could separate Boris Johnson, the man, and maybe the Boris Johnson they feel will deliver for them. Right. You know, here, we're busy mixing issues, whether it's tribalism, whether it's one, you know, so we're not even able to say, this is the person that will solve our problems. Mm -hmm. We'll go and bring in someone who's not really a technocrat, and then you start wondering why that person doesn't have a clue about how to be creative. Mm -hmm. For me, what came to my mind is, if I'm in a plane that's about to crash, and you ask me who I want at that helm, I don't care whose brother he is, as long as he can fly that plane. You know, I'm not going to look for someone who is my brother, who speaks my language. Because at the end of the day, you want someone who will navigate that airplane out of, you know, the chaos. But if you're busy putting someone at the helm who, because he's, you're doing rotation system, you're doing all kinds of crazy, I don't know what, what basis you're judging. I'm not trying to say disqualify our president on that basis. I'm just trying to say, what were the considerations when we go to the polls? We need to be enlightened. We need to know what the issues are. You're hearing now about Edo State uh, elections. Mm. And instead of hearing, you know, what is Obaseke putting on the table? Yes. What is it? You're hearing about thugs going to beat up. Oh. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, that's not what we want to be discussing yeah. at this time. We want you to be tabling okay. your no, manifesto. You know so if the masses are more enlightened no, and they start campaigning yeah. on that basis, mm -hmm. look, what are you going to do about our roads? Mm -hmm. We're not interested in you being our brother. How are you going to fix that? We're not interested in you being, you know, just tell us your pro how you're going to solve our problems. Right. Then we start calling the shots. And that's why I'm on mm -hmm. this. Page. I'm like, mm. we need to be enlightened, more socially aware, more politically aware, more activist, more understanding of the links between the people at the helm and our mm. lifestyle. Right. Then we'll become more demanding of them. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah. So that's yeah. where it's So yeah. if, what, if what you're saying, or what I think I'm hearing you mm. say, is that we need more authenticity as a nation. Which will we, come with education and enlightenment. Which will come with education and enlightenment. And, enlightenment. and, and, and also what the way are you, where you talk, because you made that connection to the villa, where you're talking about the fact that it was there was like an abuse of office, really. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Having all those people family living, members, yes. family members living in Asso Rock anyhow, and yes. even feeling like they have the power to, yes. <laughs> to stay yeah. there. Yes. Okay, I yes. get you now. And um, I mean, it's just so sordid and 
Mm. I'm just, it's just not what we want to hear yeah, coming it's, from it's there. Not, not, not at this time. It's there like major, major you know, issues of state trillion on the table. That mm. won't uh, we have budget, then. we have uh, uh, minimum wage, mm. a whole lot yeah. of minimum yeah. wage issues. And so I think also it shows that the president is not in control. I totally mean, how can he be in control and they'll be d talking to his wife in the manner in which filming her yeah. going to the press. I mean, this is his nephew's family, family that is treating the first lady Come like to that. to think of and it. Are you really surprised? No. I am not okay, surprised. Why aren't you surprised? But that, that is his nature. Really? I thought I mean, we, we, we voted him, him thinking he was a disciplinarian. He, he doesn't talk. He doesn't talk into matters that you, sometimes you will expect that, oh, my president too. Way in on this man. He will not. Out. You won't hear anything this, from him. This, this, that is the way he is. He been out in the first place if he had managed his home the yeah. way he ought to. I, I'm, I'm going to say something very controversial, and I hope I will More be shocked. More than what we've said so far. Shocked by the, by the <laughs> panel. Take it to the next I level. actually believe that our president has dementia. Oh. And so I therefore okay, fear... Okay, caveats, we don't know for sure. And we, and we don't from know for sure. No, but I'm coming, from, I'm coming, from, I'm coming, medical, I'm coming from a medical, medical um, position. Exactly. I'm a psychiatrist. Mm. And yeah. oh, my right. business is yes. mental illness, mental disorder, and that includes uh. dementia. Mm. And I actually think that many of the, shall I say, inverted commas, short callings, and I'm not being disrespectful of our president, is because the mental ability is no longer mm. there. Mm. I still think back to a couple of years ago when there was all this world furore about the bedroom, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. Yeah. And I remember not being sitting in London thinking, yes, you you know, you may like Buhari, you may not like his politics, but I always remembered him back in the day as being very cultured. And I thought he wasn't somebody who was um, deliberately provocative. And one of the symptoms of dementia, the subtle ones at the beginning, is your social cues go. You, you don't quite say the things you should or deal with. Mm. And so I think that many of the things that we're saying are as an end result of him not being totally cognitively right. intact. Correct. And so therefore, no wonder that the relatives can, you know, insult the first doing. lady and things are going on in the country and it appears like our president is not in control. Mm. Correct. But yes. I know that's quite a controversial I'm glad view. I'm glad you're flying out after that statement. I am. You're just, you're just giving an okay. Yes, and I'm yes. not a politician, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. maybe I need to check out quickly right now. <laughs> You've paid for your stay, don't worry. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. no, but I, I agree with you entirely because there is something <laughs> very, very... Checking no, out of the country. <laughs> no, I'm not. I will still be so here. Be careful what you say. <laughs> no, 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 but we're the masses. I'm with you on the fact that we're the masses are to blame for a lot of the things that uh, are happening, you right. know, we should be more informed, we should be more, more assertive as to what we want. It's, it's, it's not that 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 yeah. You can it, blame us if education is has really not been provided at for the us. State it's not. As far as yeah. making choices about who leaders is concerned. Mm. I learned that there was even no fire, okay. fire vehicle to, to, to deal with. Imagine, fire imagine on a chair. Oh well, what are we talking about? Okay, yeah. so let's even yeah. start at the state <laughs> level. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's time for you to educate us as concerns your take on our advocacy. So, on hashtag sex for grades, Ada Brown says, setting people up for sexual harassment is not alien to Western culture, where there's more sanity on such blatant abuse as we see in ours. So, wond wondering how we can stay in the right middle place and not tip over the other side. Also on sex for grades, Olamide Raphael says, it's not a worldwide crisis. Stupid things like sexual harassment do happen in America, Canada, and British universities, and even other Western countries, albeit the law protects the vulnerable. Yes, there can be some form of abuse, but the culprits are jailed here in the Western world, but in Nigeria, they are hardly brought to book. On Get a Life Nigeria, Ade Joke Lores Odunsi says, the death of comments to this very honest take on the ills of Nigeria is telling. Keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Fala Shade is calling for action. 40 seconds of action to be exact. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, 
everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics and enjoys for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's really. disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, very <laughs> terrible strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Do you sometimes feel we're stuck in a time warp? The World Mental Health Federation has since 1992 designated the 10th of October as the Global Mental Health Day. The theme for this year was Working to Prevent Suicide, a day for 40 seconds of action. Everybody globally was encouraged to set aside a minimum of 40 seconds on that day to promote suicide prevention. The world is talking about suicide and has been doing so for a long time. Why? Because every 40 seconds, someone on the globe ends their own life by suicide. This equates to approximately 800,000 people annually. Because suicide rates have globally increased by 60% in the last 45 years. Because for every confirmed suicide globally, there are believed to have been 10 further attempts. Because suicide is the commonest cause of death of men aged 49 years globally, and the second highest cause of death of men aged 15 to 25 years. Bringing it closer to home, World Health Organization has ranked Nigeria as having the 15th highest suicide rates globally. Shockingly, in most countries, the male suicide rate far outstrips that of females. However, in Nigeria, the rate of male suicide is only marginally higher than that of females. Therefore, although male Nigerian suicide rates are ranked 56 globally, female suicides are ranked the third highest in the world. So what is Nigeria doing about suicide? Sadly, the answer is not very much. The World Health Organization came up with a mental health action plan, which began in 2013 and which ends in 2020. The overall aim of the plan is the global imperative to reduce suicide by 10% by 2020. Objectives of the action plan include strengthening effective leadership and governance for mental health and implementing strategies for promotion and prevention in mental health among others. It was identified that in addition to global action, there needed to be national and multi-sectorial action. However, Despite the global and national imperative to work to prevent suicide, Nigeria does not have a defined national strategy to reduce suicide or promote mental well-being. Furthermore, suicide is still deemed a criminal offence liable to 12 months imprisonment if one is found to have attempted suicide. To further compound the issue, we have only 250 practicing psychiatrists in the country and national psychiatric services or more or less confined to the national psychiatric hospitals, which by and large are fashioned like long-stay asylums, more or less abolished in more westernized countries. Knowledge of mental health is very much lacking in the general populace. Many Nigerians equate mental illness with spiritual affliction and demonstrate what I call mental health illiteracy. Mental health is shrouded in stigma and ignorance. I believe it's time for Nigeria to come into the 21st century for a change in the mental health narrative of this country, a change in legislation, and for a complete rehaul of mental health provision in this country. Of course, wider psychosocial factors which increase the risk of suicide also need addressing. Suicide is a public health concern, not a criminal act. We are losing men and women in their prime. There is a need to act, and dare I say, act right now. Mm. Those statistics are a bit, uh, I don't know. I, I admit that I don't know people who are committing suicide, and I don't know of people who are tempted and were 
I'd have stopped or it didn't succeed. Really? Yeah. So I live a life where those figures are absolutely alien to, you. Alien to me. I don't know anybody wow. Wow. who has, and I don't know anybody who has died from suicide. So I'm now thinking to myself, oh, could it be? They're not, tell, they're that, not telling you that, that all these people are just that, that oh he died of um, a cold but meanwhile it's suicide, meanwhile, it's suicide mm -hmm. and nobody has told me or what's going on because mm -hmm. i was shocked when i read the oh. i guess one of the things to say is that suicide is underreported mm -hmm. and in our country where there's a lot of stigma Taboo. attached to mental illness mm -hmm. etc i believe it will be even more underreported right. even in westernized countries they say that for one person who is confirmed they committed suicide it's believed that there are 10 further attempts so can you imagine in our country where I believe, I, I understand certain religions, if you're known to have committed suicide, they won't even want to bury, bury you, you they won't want to have a service, etc. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy yeah. to hear what you mm -hmm. said, that if mm -hmm. you commit suicide, you're now a criminal. I yes. mean, you're, you have yeah. to go to prison. Yes. I'm thinking, yes. that's crazy. Yeah. You know because you're already unstable as yeah. it is, yes. and then they incarcerate yeah. you. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'll just quickly say this, because I want to, my thought is, you know, I'm curious as to how we arrived at this point where the female suicide rates are so high, mm -hmm. and, you know, and really push us to the third place. And I'm thinking, okay, it may have something to do with the fact that, because I know that our gen my parents' generation, when I look at them across board, mm -hmm. I haven't done a sort of experiment, they seem to be more hardy mentally mm -hmm. than our generation. Tougher, yeah. It could yeah. be that we are indulging, we're caught between this modernized, you know, internet, social media world that is outside our reach, and then the the ferocity of the things we have to deal with on a daily basis, we, somehow we haven't caught up. With, because we, you know, when they say when the going gets tough, the tough get going. We're not toughening up mm. to match up with the times we're in. And so maybe it needs to be taught in schools. Maybe we need to be better equipped socially to handle the pressures and accept that, look, we're dealing with harder times. And mm. mentally, we're not in that place. Maybe our parents were in because they, they're so hardy. A lot of yeah, our parents just got on tough. with it. But mm. now we're, we're a bit more... I don't know, we're confused about how to deal with the problem. We're not even accepting that we need to toughen up. There's, there's a mismatch, you know, Uche. Mm. Yeah, no, I mean, what I found interesting, I mean, because I've always known about this, and I just thought this is crazy, mm. about the criminalizing, attempting yeah. suicide. <laughs> yeah. Now, wouldn't that then you kill yourself in prison. people to actually make sure they kill themselves? Properly. Yeah, you know, rather than attempt, just attempt, attempt get away to get yes. there. Child. Yeah, and, and absolutely, we really need to look at men mental health in a total different light you know I think so many people it's, it's very stigmatized um, and I'm always very open about because I know I suffered from some mental health issues when I was younger um, and I you know I would hear voices and things like that and and because of that stigmatization I didn't really want to talk to anyone yeah. and I remember discussing with my sister and eventually discussing with my mom and I think it was just really the family and um, support that I was in that eventually got me out of where I was was, you know, but like, I, I don't know. I think maybe now, maybe we're even though we have social media, people are living increasingly um, Isolate. isolated yeah. lives, yes. and also they're not able to tell what is truly reality and what is false. Mm. So when you're looking at somebody else's life and it appears that they have all these wonderful things going on, there, mm -hmm. like for instance, I, there's a girl I follow. And it seems like she's on holiday all the time. <laughs> now, I don't know how she can afford it. Can afford it. <laughs> I don't know who's paying for it. But if I was a slay mama, or, you know, this, I might be like, ah, ah, what's she doing? Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. And, and I want that to either feeling down yeah. about it, or yeah. I now go and do something right. like that and put myself into further trouble, or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people. Lot of young people are in that place. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. especially the young people. They mm -hmm. seem to just buy into all of this, and it seems to depress them, and then it gets them to the mm -hmm. point of, you know, so I do agree with you, uh, Ekana, in, in a lot of cases. I think there, there's a toughening up that we need to, you know, uh, and I think it's even worse for our children really? now oh. because uh, our children are so sensitive and I don't right. even know where they're getting it from because yeah. my son is highly sensitive. I'm constantly having to bring him you know, let's get tough, you mm. know? I'm always okay. telling him, like, <laughs> you have a, you have a program. <laughs> he doesn't want to know. feel pain. I'm like, you must feel pain. That's it's right. about pain. Yeah, it's it's not, pain. Like, it. yeah. 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 yeah, so I'm trying to get him to toughen up because yeah. that is my only child. That's a man and he must behave like he a man. He must toughen up. But these days, Excellent. you know, I don't know what's Somebody going Somebody say you should on. tell him to behave like a man. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's, that's <laughs> I'm so minded. You guys not aware that the government actually banned Sniper. Yes. yes. Okay. So the reason Sniper yourself. was banned was right. because people were using it to commit suicide yes. all over the whole place, yes. especially the younger ones. Mm -hmm. I'm more concerned about my perception that some of the people in leadership 
actually need mental health. Yes. Right. Okay. I agree with yes. you. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't be mentioning names okay. mm -hmm. on air. But, okay. but my observation of some people who are making decisions mm -hmm. affecting millions of people is that they need help. So. I agree. I wish we could How to approach yeah. dealing with and those kind of matters. I think in this country we need to change the narrative around mental health. Yes. The statistics show us that one in four people will have mental health difficulties. So the reality is, is either you've had mm -hmm. mental health difficulties or you would definitely know somebody in your inner circle. So that's had why are you missing, missing this? Um, and I think so we just need to edu no educate the populace I mean, that, you know, that just like you have system. physical health, you have mental mm. health, and your mental health can be good or not so good. Why would suicide rates be increasing in this country? Well, we've had a discussion, haven't we? All the topics mm. we've discussed today have shown how difficult life is. Mm -hmm. And that is the statistics show that suicide rate in this country has increased between quite markedly between 2012 and 2017. And I think it's related to the socioeconomic factors. I completely agree with the Kenya bill that they, and you as well, Uchi, mm -hmm. that there is a need for us to build resilience in our children. Mm -hmm. And also social media has an impact because people are living a fantasy mm -hmm. or they're believing the yes, fantasy, they're, they're believing, believing the yeah. lie. And there's a big disconnect, isn't there, between the fantasy and the reality. And, 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 and the reality. Yeah. Mm. Certainly the time to act is now. I know Ekene shares my sentiment. Why then is she calling for time out to do some celebrating? If we don't stop to marvel at the life around us, we're inclined to take it for granted, don't you think? Nigerians are probably one of the wonders of the world. The other day I was listening to the radio, it was a call-in show, and almost every other caller had traveled around the world and had extensive experience of life outside our borders. At the same time, I looked through the window and there was nothing to see but cars, cars, and more cars amidst the usual jam of traffic. Different models of cars, Jeeps, the latest models, salons too. This in a country where over 46% of its population of just under 200 million live on less than $2 a day. This equates to approximately 100 million people living below the poverty line. It was then that it hit me. Nigerians must be the most amazing people in the world. We're the perpetual die-hard hustlers. One of the most populous countries in the world with over 500 indigenous languages spoken across the country, rich in natural minerals, vegetation, oil, and of course, human resource. We're globetrotters. Nigerians inhabit almost every country in the world. Nigerians will still ask you, how was your night? With a smile, even when they can't vouch for what the day holds. They will, respond to, they will respond with, it is well, or God is good, almost by reflex amidst the most oppressive conditions. Nigerians are indeed deserving of accolades. To name a few, a Nigerian surgeon, Dr. Oluyinka Olutoye, was appointed surgeon in chief at the United States Hospital. He was part of the team who performed a surgery on the baby in utero in 2016. Do make time to read about the Imafidon family from Edo State who have been tagged Britain's brainiest family. Nigerians are one of the most creative people in the world, making advances in literary arts, music, the movie, and fashion industry. Producing a Nobel laureate, Wale Shoenka, and others in the making. That we have artists like Yemi Alade, Dibanj, Davido, Tiwa Savage, and the likes winning international awards is an open secret. After all, these artists have been spawned from a rich musical heritage. We're talking King Sonia Ade, Fela Nicolapo, Kuti, Victor Waifu, the list stretches on. Our visual artists aren't left behind in putting us on the map. Njideka Kunyili, daughter of Dora Kunyili, set a record when her painting, Bush Babies, was auctioned at $3.4 million in a Los Angeles auction house. We celebrated 59 years of independence amidst indicators that would make many a heart stop. And yet, our hearts are still pumping. We live on the brink, yet we're constantly on the lookout for a breakthrough. Every week, at least, I come across Nigerians who inspire me and make me proud. I am a Nigerian, and I'm proud. We are an indomitable people indeed. I want to dedicate this advocacy to the resilience of the human breed called Nigerians. Probably. No, undoubtedly one of the wonders of the world. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready to yeah. be taken on. Yeah, we're, 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 we're.
<laughs> we're so many. We're so many that um, the suicide, um, uh, the heavy numbers of suicide, we are not. Um, I didn't notice because we're too. Many. Yeah, no matter how so, we, so there are problems mm. definitely, definitely if we're going to have high suicide rates mm. and high levels of uh, mental health and uh, and then what you've just described. Yeah, the world mm. is really resilient. resilient. <laughs> well, you know. I, I would definitely agree with you. Nigerians do make me wonder. Okay, um, <laughs> and, and, and not and not necessarily for the right reasons. Okay. You know, I do wonder when where our breaking point is. Mm -hmm. I do wonder why we're so quick to accept any rubbish that is thrown at us with very little protesting going on. I do wonder how we wake up in the morning and, uh, like you said, we're still optimistic, even when everything looks doom, gloom, and bleak and whatever. That is what I wonder about. I'm not sure it is a good thing that we are the way we are, because I feel that because we are the way we are, because we're, we're always looking for solutions to solve our own immediate problems, not Nigeria's problem as a whole, I feel that we're not going to get anywhere fast. Um, I, I love being a Nigerian because we're optimistic, we're vibrant, um, you know, we're hospitable. Those are the reasons I love being a Nigerian. But in terms of, are we really doing well? No. The Nigerians that do well are the Nigerians that have left these shores. And it's because they have gone abroad. Like, for instance, the doctor you mentioned. Mm. Did he perform that surgery in Nigeria? No, he did it. No, he performed it yeah, abroad. abroad. The, the Brainiest family, sure, they're in Britain, yeah, in right? Britain. I think yeah, not Nigeria. Nigeria's Brainiest okay. family. So let's be looking at it. A lot of the times, Nigerians are excelling. They're excelling because they're excelling in better environments, environments that equip them, that allow them to excel. <laughs> Which is why I said every every week, I didn't want to be say every day mm. because it could be that. Oh, people. I, I, I but every week, I meet Nigerians who are idea. who are performing yeah. and they're performing against the odds. No, but they, they are performing it, against it, the odds. Yeah. I even Nigeria. Nigeria, despite all the odds, there are Nigerians who are doing fantastically well. Yes, agreed. It was a Nigerian that stopped Ebola from. Oh, yes, yes. Was it Nigeria? Yes. It's yes. a Nigerian in yeah. this environment as well. And there are several instances, including some things that just bring smile to your face. Mm. I was working on Broad Street a couple of weeks ago, and this guy just kept following me. What do you want to buy? I have shit. I have shit. I have this. Hmm. I didn't know what to say. I said, I want to buy a Calon. There wasn't anything like Calon. I don't even know what I said. He said, I have it. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't help but bust out laughing <laughs> that you have to know what is what I do, what I do I'll go and find it. Yes. <laughs> and apparently, what will he do? He will take you to where there are more people, right? Yes. He probably would know what Calum, the Calum yeah. is. He didn't want say, to give up on his hostage. He's not going to give up on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on, have it. Yeah. You know, and that, that is, those are the kind of things that, that, that make me just love this country. Yeah. I, I had to pay for a book in traffic one day using transfer. For the bookseller. Mm. Okay, okay. 500, 500 naira. Okay. I, I said, ah, I don't have cash. You see how they accept transfer. <laughs> and right inside the traffic one, there, I one. did transfer. It's, it's, yeah, but I think it's, it's so daring, sad. isn't it? It's so sad that we. You, you can see that we have great potential wow. in this country. Great potential. And all it takes is really to have the right conducive environment that would unleash Fantastic. this potential. Oh, so that's yeah. really I what brings right my heart. So, yeah. Yes, I see where you're that's coming from. That's why I call it a wonder, wonder, really, yeah. But it's also Such heartbreaking. A contradiction. It's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking it's, because look at it. Look at that guy that would have found Calon. I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted him to back up. Back yes. Up. yes. Uh, no, you would have to learn that in Nigeria. You tell him to back, back up. Even that, to find a way. Otherwise, you're giving him more room for. For, yeah, because be, be creative, um, some, someone, when I said, and I'm sure she'll watch this program and, and yeah. smile, when I said, oh, I'm proud, the person took me on, on, oh, you're proud, what are you proud about? There's nothing to be proud about being yeah. a Nigerian, no, 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 you know, so angry with me for using the expression proud because they felt I was patting Nigeria on back and saying we've arrived. But I said, no, I'm looking at something intrinsic to being a Nigerian. We haven't yet come into our own, and I compared it to it. my children. They haven't arrived yet. They, there's so many things I could get annoyed with them about, but I see that intrinsic nature there, and it endears me to them, and I'm proud of them just the way they are, because I'm looking at, okay, with a little more nurturing, with a little more, this child will get to. So Closer, I'm not yeah. celebrating all the nonsense okay, you're we're you're doing. Celebrating, I'm celebrating the being, the, the, because I feel that you're my, my identity, what, what, what yeah, and also yeah. me, I'm a Nigerian, my DNA is tied up with this nation. Mm. So I'm proud of the fact that I have some kind of connection to Nigeria, please. I think that we need to celebrate the fact that 
despite the difficulties that yeah. we have explored today, many Nigerians are surviving. We talked about those who don't have resilience and we kind of linked it with mental illness. But actually, many Nigerians are very, very resilient. They keep smiling mm -hmm. in the midst of all the difficulties. And I think that is to be celebrated. It should be celebrated, but like I said, it is also a problem for us. Yes, I, I get we your are point. Not, we are not fighting for our rights no. as a reason because we're smiling and, and just, you know, taking it taking all. It all. Can, can I bring another element? I'm going to bring some psychology. That's probably part of our mental health <laughs> if you bring, padding. If you, if you look at the Maslow hierarchy of, um, yes. need. And of need, you get what I mean? It is very difficult for people who are at the bottom of the ladder, so to speak, in terms of they're struggling to have a roof over their head and food on the table for them to be aspiring to these higher things. That, that hierarchy Absolutely. teaches us that basically your, your basic needs need to be met before you can aspire higher. Yeah. So where, as um, mm -hmm. Kenneth pointed mm -hmm. out, 100 million people live under the poverty line. Frankly speaking, it's people like us who, in many respects, are privileged, who need to do the fighting. Yes. Because those who okay. don't, can't point. even afford three meals a day are not going to be fighting for these higher no, it's, things. It's a valid right. point. Because even Chuka talking about education on his advocacy was mm -hmm. saying, look, you know, why are people preoccupied with tribalistic, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. triggers? It's because they can only just think instinctively and you, you haven't really given them the space to now digest. And even when we're looking at our education system and how terrible it is, mm -hmm. the conditions there are not conducive to research, to thinking Maybe and developing your research. mind. Yeah. Come and see the environment they're coming research. out of. I think when would that student stop and reflect and think, I can change the world, I can develop a breakthrough mm -hmm. you know, solution? The they can't. The students are the people facing sex, 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 sex harassment. <laughs> I always say this on every show, and I'm going to say it again. It's a deliberate action by our the elites. So we'll call it neglect then. Yeah, a deliberate. No, I think it's a deliberate. Neglect is different action. from deliberate action. <laughs> I'm not sure I can get it's to deliberate. deliberate, because deliberate yeah. Yeah. When you even look at our budgets, when you look at our budget, you will know that it's deliberate. They're not interested in education. They're not interested in healthcare. Yeah. Mm. They're interested in other things that don't yeah. impact. On us, yes. you know, the. the, the so, because even, even he said the state level, a governor who sees all his people, the populace in his state, are not educated. That should pain him. No. That should become a, a mission for you him and say, saying. these it people must be enlightened so they can make right choices. Walking, because, like he said, they're preoccupied with yeah. feeding and, and just the basic things that, you know, people just take for granted in other yeah. Western climes. So, like, we can't expect them to. It's, we can't expect them no. to rise up, yeah. leave the selling of their akara yeah, yeah. and be on the streets. It's, they won't it's, eat that it's, a, it's more of a, of um, it's more of the way of doing things in the north than mm. in the south. So mm. even if you try to cure it in the south for whatever it is, it's when you get to the north that you realize that this this dedicated action to stop certain people from rising and stay where mm. they are mm. is. Severe, yes. and that's part of what I was saying in my yeah. advocacy. That it's all in the all our interests to make sure the North, the North are educated. Is, yes, it's a problem. Mm. They, they are a big problem. Mm. Um, well, mean, if you put it like that, it sounds like that. Right, because like in the North, they have a system where there's a person that is really wealthy mm. and he will now take care of everybody and so they go to him for mm. handouts. For handouts. Mm. Okay, well, I mean, again, yeah. I'm, I'm glad for Lasha they make that point that we have a responsibility, those of us who are privileged enough to think things through. Well, we've lamented, lampooned, provoked, and even patted ourselves on the back. Now it's time to call it a wrap. Please keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Let's do it again next week, same time, same station. Till then, it's bye from us. Bye bye. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah. can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, very strategy. Very terrible <laughs> strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Yeah.